the botanical survey of india is working on the survey of the flora they are just counting the flora they are making the description of the species and invasion of species and their distribution and their uses by the local people and we are documenting it and flora of india that is 1873 flora british india was there when india was under the jurisdiction of the british empire after that no flora has come so after that independent india we are going to publish that is the flora of india already 35% already it was published and other 25% is on the pi pipeline and other 50% is really working and besides these also we are identifying the rdt species that is a rare endangered threatened and endemic plants and, uh, those were plants are going to be extinct that we are finding out and life specimens we are collecting from the field itself and we are just conserving in our botanical gardens throughout the india in our circle offices i imagine it must be one of the most fascinating jobs in the world if you are interested in botanical matters but have have uh, has india suffered over the past few decades with regards to the numbers of species you have are you seeing a a decline or a, a in 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 the number of species you have in this country yes uh, about uh, 30% total species are uh, 30% of the total species are endemic endemic means that is growing in a particular area that is not growing throughout india they are must require some ecosystem and out of this 30% of plant we are having about 17000 flowering plants so out of which 30% are endemic out of that is 2% is going to be extinct that is for many uh causes are there due to climatic change due to anthropogenic cause and also the industrialization and development of the something in our society these are the causes of our the declination of this uh, number of species and you say development is one of those causes how do you ensure that people learn to value the plants and the ecosystems around them and the environment around them how how do you get that message through to people that it's not just a you know a chore of daily life but this actually can be part of your life and it can add to it and perhaps you can make a living from it you see that is the <clears throat> we are talking about the conservation of the biodiversity we are always talking about the awareness i personally believe that the awareness is not is after all the last limit we the educated person are more harmful because because i believe that the homo sapiens our scientific name they are the obligate parasite they are taking from the all sources from the natural even that they are having the human right commission but from whom he is taking the food and for his life that plant right commission is not there so we we already build up a human right commission but plant right commission should be there another one thing awareness is also required for the children and those who are illiterate persons they should know about the biodiversity but at the same time we have to see their livelihood also if you not give them rice you cannot they, they will not hear about your biodiversity it is meaningless in ke other opposite side educated person to treat the educated person there is no recipe for the awareness regarding the awareness there must be some action that action suppose in indian botanic garden that is the southeast asia biggest garden we are conserving number of rare endangered threatened plants suppose after 5 years we are getting only one fruit that contains many seeds we can multiply that very rare plants we can multiply it we can germinate it but suppose one educated person is plucking that fruits how we will get the seeds after catching him you cannot punish him because there is no law there is no legislation act that is the fault i think in the biodiversity so after rio convention in the 1992 today we have reached in 2012 so after 20 years we have not implemented so far on biodiversity legislation act that has to be seen i believe it and finally i mean when we look at india we look at a country that's developing so fast and there are so many um 
mouths to feed and, and, and poor people to sort of pull up the pull up the ladder. But um, how, how do you how do you assess the way the government is approaching development whilst respecting the environment? NGOs are working in such a way that is the time limit of work is there. When they are getting the fund, they are also time limit is there. They are having the roadmap. And in case of I know that the Sundarban some one NGO is a news, nature, environment, wildlife society, they are working. But all NGOs regarding this livelihood in the morning session, I have heard that the forestation and also the mangrove restoration is there. But prior to that, we have to think whether we will make the natural forest or we will make simply forest. If we will make the natural forest, then we have to think about the site forest. What are the species are there? Because we are having the society plant also having the society, to whom he will prefer, to whom he will not prefer. So that phytosociology, they have to apply in the regeneration of the plant. So whether they are following that things, that scientist of the government department should look after all these things, or any scientist should be look after all these things, so that they can uh, get the guidelines how much? Because many of these, they are NGOs, they are monoculture species they are cultivating. That should be stopped. Because monoculture species cannot make a forest. Multiculture is required. So what are the species are there? If any invasive aligned species is there, then whole forest will go. So that should be take care of this. Because they should not look after first growing tree to make the miracle thing to the world that the, this barren land I converted to the forest. They should think about the ecosystem also. They could think the balance of the ecology.